think so. I told her to do it. <laughs> Better be. I told you. Yeah. Actually, I'll have this close to me as well. It's a chess table. Yes, but not quite. But it's, it's meant to be <laughs> a chess table. Yeah. Mm. But look, where's this one meant to go? No, it's meant to be an extra pawn, but um, he just stays there for now. And if someone is actually playing. Bug me. Oh, no, that's gonna As bug you me. once lost one and you bought it. No, they came with two extra heads, and clearly they've. Uh, I got a mistake. I was I don't know. That's dope. The castles are like little huts. Mm. It's quite dope. But, anyways, such is life. Winter is upon us. It is, but I love Zimbabwe winters. <laughs> this is winter. I love it. I'm loving it. Distribution. What is distribution? What is distribution? I think I'll put this back. Um, distribution in our music context is the um, placing of music or supplying of music to monetized platforms, stores. Mm -hmm. um, that's at the basics what we're doing taking your nice mp3 content, audio content, or visual content, mp4s, placing them on your iTunes stores, on your Spotify's, Vivo, etc., etc. et cetera. I, I don't think if um, the, the days we grew up, I don't think um, when uh, we would look for music, we would say, oh my God, let me, you know, check for music on Spotify, or let me check for music on iTunes, or all these things. Why is it all of a sudden now, the stores now are very important? Because a lot of people haven't been using them, but now it's so important. I think traditionally, the way our industry was set up, or I think the whole world really was, at the end of the day, recorded music had to be put on the market. Right? And previously, the, the way we would get to the market was through your HMV stores. Or I really don't know, like, you know, the stores here in Zim, what they were then. But radio, record stores, mm -hmm. that's where traditionally we would buy music. Mm -hmm. Then, so the Gamma Records, they would print and make sure it hits the market through those, those, those stores. Mm -hmm. But then now, um, I mean, then from there, we then went into, without Gamma Records, we had to figure it out. So we're still printing CDs, but now we're taking them directly to people through maybe my show, my event, you can purchase a CD if you come through, or maybe I go the route or find local marketers, those guys that sell my CD in town or things like that. So we still always had knew that, okay, I record music, but it has to get to the market somehow. Yeah. Then piracy, unfortunately, got us to forget that the real model was selling that music. We got into a space of, as long as I have the market can access my music, it's all good. So if it's pirated or not, I'm not bothered because the idea is when people access the music, they, they know about me and they come to my shows where I'm monetizing the thing. So we almost forgot about the need to figure out how to sell music. Then we fast forward to 2005, where digital became a thing, and you know even America or the UK established markets had to now respond to it because initially. P2P sharing was the way we were getting MP3 files. <laughs> the record industry was very slow to accept that, okay, we can monetize uh, music now and give it to people digitally. Mm -hmm. So fast forward to 2005, that's when streaming uh, downloads started, iTunes, Apple, I iPods, and you, know, you now had your iTunes store, da, 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 da. but it really took even the established markets a long time to realize that, no, the buyer behavior or the consumer's behavior now is that they prefer instant access. They prefer that convenience to the music. It's no longer I go queue up for my Kanye West CD at HMV store. I want to just be able to download it from the comfort of my home. I want to be able to play this music um, in my car at home without having to think, ah, see, didn't I see a show by? So digital became the ideal solution. And the stores now became important because it was now um, more about who, where I can access the music and what terms that that store has, but also the maybe user functionality that they prefer. Like Spotify now with the playlist culture is the mm -hmm. ultimate store in yeah. comparison to say Deezer or Apple Music. Yeah. So now it became, so now all these options again were 
came as a result of different territories. Some companies also, like say Spotify started in Sweden. Mm -hmm. So they figured that out. They covered the European market and they have a lead advantage there. So us as distributors, we know we have to have our content there. So stores became important because the customer showed the, uh, the recording industry that we prefer it as a digital format rather than as a as a CD now, we don't want the physical version anymore. Mm -hmm. So that's why for us as African content producers, African record labels, we also have to answer that call. Our customer is not limited to Zimbabwe only, so we can't base our whole business model on Zimbabwean preferences. We have to think our customer now is also in Australia, is also in Europe. There, they prefer it this way, so we have to satisfy mm -hmm. their need. 100%. I've got an, uh, a problem here where, you know, in our music industry, <clears throat> you've got a lot of artists and they've got their different managements and they've got their different advisors or whatever who tell them on how to um, put out their music, so to speak. And you've got, for example, you represent um, Jungle. And Jungle has got quite a you know a huge market share here in Zimbabwe. We'll speak mainly for Zimbabwe. And um, I think a couple months ago, um, it came to the tabloids. Um, there was an issue surrounding Se Colors, where he was having issues along the distribution problems with you guys, and he was saying he wants his content or his YouTube account. I can't remember exactly. What's going on there? What was the issue there? Because if people like, say, Colors, who's, you know, a, he's a big artist, and he's this type of people who you would say is using these outlets, and if, if he's now backing out of these outlets, why should I, if I'm new to this? Why should I sign up for what he's running away from? Yeah. So what happens, it's a combination of things, to be honest, and... I have to choose my words carefully. <laughs> but I think um, it really comes down to education. Like, and I don't mean as in but understanding the education about that business and that particular part of the business. Because when we know what it can do for us and know how to engage with it, we can then, I think, have different or the right expectations for something. Mm -hmm. So I think what with, with Sekal is what's just happening with this, what he, was, what he was looking for was to say, I now want to have my own YouTube channel, not, not having my content on Vivo, and I want to run that myself. Then I think what he found, because he hadn't informed us yet, so what, what he found then was when he went to re-upload the files that he had once given us, the copyright strike came up. And yeah. it was like, oh my goodness, I, I don't even own my music anymore. That's how it felt. I think when he, he did it, and I was like, no, 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 it's not that you don't own your music, you do, but we have the license on, in the digital space to monetize it on your behalf. That's what it is. It's not that Junk is saying now it owns it, you don't have rights to your music. No, that's not it. So no, that's number one. But now if someone is uh, having that issue and processing it that way, it's really like, now they're running things and da, 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 da. So the first part was no, had you informed us, would have also initiated a takedown and said, okay, you now have all your complete rights back. As far as digital is concerned, you can run your stuff. But him requesting to leave or, to, or him wanting to leave initially was not even due to maybe a lack of performance on our part or the, the model is not working. It's genuinely he's not understanding how to win with digital. Because as much as we have a Sekalas, we also have in Zimbabwe Kileti who is succe successful as far as the numbers are concerned with his music with us and is happy with us. So it's, it's to take each account separately and to say, okay, fine, maybe you're not quite understanding what it is that we're trying to do here. So you will start finding problems. Before we get away too quickly, there's something you just mentioned there. Um, Colors was quite, you know, what? I don't own my music. Yeah. Ownership. Yes. What is yes. ownership? Because I've got, uh, um, I wouldn't say my friend, but you know, Tory Lanes, who is here on his social media, is always, you know, talking about he's he's about to be free. He's about to be free. He's about to be free from Interscope. What is ownership? Right, and this, so these are the the cool conversations that so artists. If, if I come to you, to Tanya, um, your jungle, 
I've got my new EP, my new album. Mm. I've been working on it for months, weeks, days, I don't know. I need you to now distribute it to me, mm. for me. Mm. I give you the content. Yeah. I don't know the license. Here I am, I've come to your office. I'm mm. still in your office here. Yes. I'm now speaking like, like every, everyone, yeah. in the general Zimbabwe. Sister and internet. internet. flash music yangu computer yenyu. Ndokuda mu office meme. Mondo dza kuti ah bruda atwerk muda chichichi ndozvigopai. Ndabva ipapo a week later, I'm going to go ah, sure, all link, chinchako chapa, chapa internet. In it, but don't you want to internet, don't you want to internet, but the kind of YouTube, and don't you oh, all right. Panapa, didn't know the Duck Sheba, and the Duck Sheba, song yake, Sherbet, there. And if you see license, it'll then say Merlin Jungle Entertainment Ventures. But in any Duck Sheba, and Rabut mention who owns my music? Do you own it? Or right now, are you just representing me, but I own it? What does that mean when people say ownership? When Beyonce says, oh, I can't do anything with my music. It's owned by um, Columbia. What does that mean? So, ownership. So with music, um, let's, let's first look at um, the music file. Like you've just said, um, I re I, I've recorded, so I have a recorded version of my lyrics and composition. That's where it begins. So in the established industries, what tends to happen is when they talk about master recordings or master rights, they're talking about the person who has either written, composed, so produced the music, written the lyrics, and then put those two together on a recorded disc or on a mp3 tiny recording file but the first rights that we have is the lyrics and the composition together before it's even recorded mm -hmm. so this is why record labels go to own from the beginning mm -hmm. then they'll say so and so artist by song written by sia produced by neo taipa license for recording it kuna rihanna kut aimbe uh, love the way you lie so Rihanna now anuva pinzwa anuva piwa license to perform song ya Neo Nasia the person of Tangia. So, but then Nia uh, Neo Nasia have we producer rights or songwriter rights. Then artist anuva piwa performance rights. Then jungle yo pinda yo ah it's not tangesa the music. Um, it's to vada piwa license to sell. Online, so to be a digital license, that's why I just want the jungle Merlin Merlin Jungle Entertainment Ventures. We on the web have the license to distribute this only us in these territories or in this territory. Could data you'd even find artists would have multiple publish uh, distribution deals. I just signed to Ireland, UK, I signed to America, I signed to Australia. But now, thanks to the web, again, you can have one central party that you're using to cover the, the, the globe. So what happens in an instance where um, um, say colors, mm -hmm. he, in his instance, he, maybe he wants to take his music from you yes. to go and do it himself. Oh, okay. So does he own that music? Does he have the right to just say, give me my music and you don't have any money or any breaking of a contract or is, is he, is he entitled to use that music? And this is the beautiful thing that Tory Lanez is trying to get to, where there's, he's not talking to the record label because they're actually the, right, the, the person that owns that, that music. He is actually a performing rights. I could not know, I want from beginning. Because I knew that my lady. So I think my understanding of this, if I was to put it on a Zimbabwean model, we don't have record labels okay. like that, where in America, you've got these people who are always tied into record deals because one, just like here in Zimbabwe, you might find you've got an Uncle Epperton mm -hmm. and all of a sudden, he didn't have visuals, and, but he's got passion now, exactly. who's been pumping money into exactly. his brand. Yes. Passion could come in as a record label and yes. say, 
whatever video I'm producing for you, I own it. Absolutely, because now he has... Because I'm giving you the money, but what's my thing at the end of the day? I want to own this the video, content, the content. Yeah. Yeah. So, exactly. So at the end of the day, Epperton is like a Tory Lanes where five years down the drain, he's now got his own backing. He doesn't need a passion, for example. Exactly. He now wants his content back. That's where he's saying, I want to be free. Sign me free, out. Yes. And I want to now, maybe they'll say, okay, we can value how much you can buy your recorded files for. So this is the beauty with um, uh, independent artists. And we are, as a distributor, we can't say, I know, I want to do our content because we were just given a license. So you can always revoke and say, ah, going forward, and I actually want to take, go not just leave, the jungle relationship, but take my content with me and go because we're multiple license. Like we don't own it. All right. Okay. I think I think that's brought us so much clarity that a lot of people maybe did not know. Even myself, I think I've just gotten a bit of an eye opener. But okay. So 2020, right? We're here going forward. Is it something advisable? Here I'm I'm back again, Doc Sheba. <laughs> I'm not too sure why I keep using this Doc Sheba. I need to look into this. <laughs> but Doc Sheba and Dzoka Um, I'm here in 2020. I have got um, a place where I spend a lot of my time during the day and there's free Wi-Fi. So I've got internet access. Internet is not my biggest concern. Uh, while I was on my Facebook, a little ad came up from a place called Chunko. Another one from Vida. Another one from the, these, you know. Yeah, and they're telling me, do you have music that you want to put online? Sign up now, free. And all I have to do is put in my email address. That's it. And within a couple of days, my music is anywhere on these stores they've said they're advertising to. But... In the same 2020, ah, there's this guy called Jacaranda, there's this guy called Jungle. Mm -hmm. What are the comparisons? What are you know why in 2020 going forward, let's see, would I want to venture into working still with distributors as opposed to just putting this stuff online by myself because on the same online platform i can go on trace.com or trace.africa and submit content and if it's dope they will accept it um the same way if i want to send my content i don't know to a radio dj i just need to find out his contact details and it's a matter of convincing him or maybe just giving him this music do i still need a jungle um, so I'll answer it in two parts. Today's Doc Sheba artist, 2020, you really, um, you can do a lot of things yourself. What it fundamentally comes down to is you're taking, it's administration that we're saying focus on, it's almost like specialize, specialize on what you do best. We specialize on what we do best and we both win because we're taking advantage of what each other is an expert at. That's essentially what it comes down to. And a jungle, you're tapping into their, if you want, um, experience, but also the network. Because, yes, well, when you contact your trace, but you don't have contact, maybe a sound city, maybe a MTV. But with, through this one contact, you now have all those 10 other guys. You know, automatically. So what it comes down to is the size of your business and the headache that you're willing to have for your business. Mm -hmm. And if you're, if you're willing to, because you now have to learn the administration, the actual ASA, um, and um, you know, the contact is knowing, okay, every once a month, this is how, you know, so instead of thinking about that, have someone else administrate and handle that. But then the second thing for me is it also comes down to um, the relationships that you are also utilizing jungle for could he, sorry the relationship that you're benefiting knowing a jungle versus for example or working with the jungle versus working with the chunko only because our priority as jungle is the african content creator um we're passionate about that because to my african so we prioritize your content like we, we were talking earlier about 
now the stores are having to reallocate priority to, because my, my size and my office are one zikira, and Africa is not top of their list. Mm -hmm. So even this is at store level, not you imagine at distributor level. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it means good to kind of, product yeah, Delta, I'll push a big free man for another maybe six weeks. Mm -hmm. But at Django, you are assured 100% prioritization of your content because you're African. So it means the relationships that we are pitching on our, on our catalogs we have to, to iTunes or to Spotify is different from what Chunko would pitch because they attend to European cre uh, content creators. They cover that territory. So they want to win more in that territory. That they, to them, Africa is not even an industry. There's really not much of a market to tap into. So for me, those are the two distinct reasons why a, a viable business, like a content creator who's trying to create a viable business, those are the two things thought, okay, administration headache, can I handle it? Then the network and the ex expertise, do I have it? Then the second part is, okay, yes, if I say yes, I, I, I need those guys because I don't have A, B, and C, but who is better to represent me and my needs and understands, like you were saying, my issues? Because that by internet versus someone in, in Europe who's, who understands that line of work already is different. Mm -hmm. So I will prioritize Dr. Sheba's issues and understand the world is existing and, and suggest solutions for his type of business in his type of market than a Chunko ever can process or even begin to understand. Okay, so the, there's more to you placing my music onto the internet, that's what you're saying? Yes, there's so much more into it. All right, a week has passed. Mandi tu mira link, talk sheba. Strawberry, yaba internet. Yaba internet. Todi. So, before that... Here's talk sheba. I've got this link now saying smart link slash get strawberry. Now, I've blasted all these groups I've got with this link, yeah, across everyone I know who's not going to block me. But guys, check it out. Doc Sheba is here in Zimbabwe, and he sent out this stuff. When uh, his friend opens this link, what they see is a link to Deezer, a link to Apple, a link to Spotify, and another to Tidal. And then that's it. But this person clicks, let's say, I don't ah, I mean Apple do is it's iTunes and click it, not just image. Or click a or song. Ah, or the fara song, or nakids on a song. Only 14 seconds into the song, it cuts out because it's a preview. On the oh sign up to an Apple account. You know? Okay, what is this? Mm -hmm. Click on it. Cha cha, put in my name. Ah, that's not easy. I'm Takudza. Ah, uh, surname. You know? <laughs> there I am. Ah, next step, Rakunzi. Payment. I've got three options that come up. Chingwechuwati PayPal. Chingwechuwati put in a very uh, redeemer voucher code. And then go to good credit card slash debit card <laughs> information. So I'm sitting there thinking, okay, I've got like a few bucks in my eco cash. How the hell do I put that? What's this? Okay, let me put credit card because I've got a credit card from CBZ. Bing. Open that. Put in my credit card. Chota is processing. Next thing, Jodi, un unable to process. Okay. Don't need. And I think this is the biggest issue with a lot of Zimbabweans. Yeah. It, not necessarily that people can't access some of these stores. I could be able to access them, but maybe my, the banking system here in our country doesn't allow me to have an Apple account mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because I can't pay for it. Mm -hmm. Now, how is Doc Sheba really going to maximize digitalizing stuff when his fans can't even access his content? Why not just continue with my WhatsApp access, or who is SoundCloud or Amazon that um, audio Mac, um, you know, all these other free things? Mm -hmm. Why should I put my stuff on iTunes? Why should I put my stuff on here? Mm -hmm. Yes, you can tell me that we're not marketing mm -hmm. for Zimbabwe alone. I have understood that. Mm -hmm. 
But here I am, Doc Sheba. I'm hardly even known by Che Guru. Mm -hmm. But here you are trying to convince me that I were Colombia, Buenos Aires, and Argentina are going to somehow consume this thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Which is true. Which is true. There's your water there. Have you, have you some water? <laughs> Contributing points I wonder to, to, to bring that understanding to that why. Yes, Dr. Sheba, I think I'm married. I don't know what I'm right now. Maybe I don't feel any other race, to be honest. I said, maybe I suppose I started up a radio. So I got to spend some time like that. So, distributor, it's a pin, 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 it's a you can still have your mass route to fulfill any market. And still today, some of our brands, Killer T, for example, my show is like, he'll still print CDs because he still wants to monetize. Now we know, so we look at it as merchandise. But yeah, we think so someone may want to just see that thing and the album, like super fans, they want still that, you know, you know, about it as my vinyl art collectible test items. So distributors have no problem with that. So you may be one way to not shake up a minimum threshold as an artist where you're working towards that mass distribution and understand, and now really seeing the results of money from these platforms. Mm -hmm. But yes, the name stages, at the beginning stage, it's, it's, how can I say it? It's almost like just having the, the best practice for, it, for the business you're in. But yes, you still have that access part of the module. But you know, at, the, at this level, I just need my music to be accessed for me to be known. Hence why it's a that Kupama Radio DJ. Them spinning, it doesn't necessarily pay us for now, you know. But um, one day, those who's publishing royalties are going to come. Yeah, I totally understand. I think I understand where you're coming from because I think there's days where in Nini sometimes... I can come across um, a song that I might like. Let's say I'm listening to radio in my car, mm. and then an artist comes up and goes, oh, I did not know this Nachi O song, mm. for example. Then, for example, I might hear the DJ say the name of the song. My usual outlets for searching for songs are my Spotify, because I have an account, or I go to Apple, because I have an account. So my first thing when I ever find someone telling me, ah, have you heard the new track by Ningi? My, I go on Apple quickly and I just search, okay, DJ Mapurisa has apparently a new song. Let me go look for it on Apple. So I get where you're coming from, that there's that one or there's a few who when they hear of a dog Sheba, their first place to look for will be iTunes. And they're like, what's my iTunes on? And when they do find you, why not make a, f a few cents at it that nothing? I get that. I totally understand. But like I'm saying, it's good to doctor, but I, you have to understand, Kuti, that's where, I, I, as a brand, as a musician, I want to get to a point where, at every point, my music is monetized. Mm -hmm. I'm being consumed in the budget. So you, we are growing to that level. We are growing to that. That's the goal. It has to be the goal. So although, yes, immediately, you know, it looks like, what's the point? That is the purpose of what you're doing. You're not recording music to stay in Budiriro. You're recording music to grow your brand, to grow the business, to one day say, my studios, Angu, other new artists are coming through. You've built a business around it. So that has to be the goal. And for that to be the goal, we have to see, okay, where right now can we make money? And we start to say, okay, target, how do we go from 100 people knowing us to 1,000? And it's not just those 1,000 people only from Budiriro. No, we now want to be known nationwide. What are the... What's the formula we should apply? Okay, we've realized that my radio is not in Australia. How do we grow our audience more? You know, so it's, it sets the tone for what we then plan for. Sub talk ship. Right. Monetizing. Love that word. Money. Who doesn't love money? I love talk Shandira. I don't know. I don't know. Because I always try to understand where some of these people are coming from. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's Corona, as Donald Trump likes to call it, the Chinese virus. I don't know if it's the Chinese virus uh -huh. that has made um, people like Instagram, Facebook, 
Twitter, YouTube, more alert because maybe they notice that artists around the world are complaining that we are sat at home, we're not making money. So they're trying to find out different other ways artists can make money with the content that's out there or whatever. I've, you find yourself now, if you go on Instagram, I'll use myself in it as an example. Um, I remember last week um, I was listening to this famous song. What is the name of the song? I don't know the name of the song, but it's been the one year Don't Rush. I think it is called Don't, don't rush. rush. The Don't Rush Challenge. The Don't Rush Song. Yeah. yeah. So I finally found the song on my Apple and I'm like, oh, dope song. Oh, it even has one heady. I love that guy. Okay, let me listen to the song. Okay. Uh, I took, you know me, I love my videos. I'm there in the car driving, took a, a young video, posted it on my Insta story. Um, I think about an hour after I'd posted it, I went onto my Instagram and on my notifications, I had an infringement uh, message come to me saying that according to Instagram and their community guidelines, I don't own this song, so I'm, I can't post it um, on my Instagram. And as well as that, it's also blocked in 252 countries. And one of the countries was Zimbabwe. And I'm like, ah, okay, what's going on here? So I just thought, ah, me no. Twenty minutes after posting, I get the same same message I got when I posted that other guy's song, saying I don't own this song. And it's been blocked in, this one was 90 something countries. It was a bit different, but it was on 96 countries have been blocked. But luckily Zimbabwe was on there. Uh, they could see it. But I noticed that some of the countries that was there was New Zealand and Australia that was blocked. And I'm like, ah, what's going on there? Who's monetizing that? Because... I don't think Freeman likes his music not being able to be advertised because I think one of the main ways of advertising is people maybe posting your content, be it Snapchat or now you see TikTok, how it's the new way of promoting music. I've got my guy from the UK called Simba. He's got that's the song called Rover. I don't know if you've heard it, but it's been, it now has over 5 million views now on YouTube because he did this campaign on TikTok where a lot of people were using his song to make the little TikTok jokes. And now he's gotten over 5 million views on his song. But this song actually came out, I think last year in September, but TikTok made it popular during the whole Corona stuff. And now it's at 5 million. So now he's a one hit wonder from nowhere. And I guess now iTunes, yeah, I can make a sense here. Cause so now imagine, some people now won't even be able to find out uh, Dog Sheba's music mm -hmm. because Django has got this, uh, this monetizing on fleek <laughs> that the minute somebody just posts it, Django's bah, according to Django, you don't own this room. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but uh, Titi, when you, I don't know now what your experience was once, because the only thing that has to happen, and we were actually talking about this as a team, you know, and what, how much do you also empower the customer to know good? No, we want you to do that, but when you do it, always remember to put that disclaimer or always remember to when that strike comes. Because this is, you know, it's a routine check in English on Instagram and Facebook because they have deals with us as distributors. Don't just let it be running riot, you know. And these are official, verified accounts. So anytime we post on these accounts, but anything else, just make sure that person has wavered their ownership to monetize. Because some of these platforms are generating money. Someone just streaming stuff on IGTV, it creates revenue because it's now content and we've agreed as content distributors or, or run the content producers, which we want to be paid for creating content. So a content producer, Gangwara, also makes almost policies um, Facebook and Instagram and YouTube could to make sure wherever my content is seen or experienced, it pays me. So, Pangapacho, it's, um, 
it's just the customer knowing to waive at that rate. Because that's because uh, I don't know now when you when when you went. But the thing is, you can't honestly expect me on my Insta story to now write. I don't own this. I obviously don't own this music. It's not. I'm not saying I own it. In Rungo vibe bong the music. Do you understand? Rungo terra also ni Rihanna. I'm not in Dini Rihanna. Did I say I want algorithm? Yeah, yeah. I can't zuko or not. I wa ifen in muna rutu gazrama. In ongo nzi when this happens. You know, and this is a random. Is it you that sets these? No, it's the it's the the platform that has its own because each platform has different rules of engagement and because different ways they operate, in, especially in different territories as well. Guy Bakke gets flagged, mm -hmm. but on the same Gango album, if I post, what's my other favorite song? Musie. It doesn't get flagged. It doesn't get That's flagged. That's what I'm saying. So they have these random, just to make sure system is aware Kushanda. Because say as a distributor, we go, ah, fantastic, Sakaji, Murubata Bas. Because if that never happens, then we're actually genuinely concerned. Because some people are just posting stuff and you guys... So Freeman is making money from everyone who's posting his music yes, on Instagram. Yes, especially, I was going to say, yeah, especially on these user-generated, uh, like with, through the user-generated content. As well as Facebook, because Facebook has exactly. started doing the same thing also. We've muted your video because you've copyrighted infringement. Even YouTube was big on that, you know, and then now YouTube has made it even when you're posting the content actually says, do you own? You know, and you just have to say no, it's not mine. There's a day I was with Freeman and he was posting um, um, his video, Guy Baki, because it had hit 2 million views. So he was putting it on his story and he got the flag on his Instagram. He contested, he's like, no, I own the song. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I've noticed ever since then now they don't flag him I don't know what they saw but they were like ah he must be the owner because <laughs> certain things match but he, they've not verified him he's not verified there but they, on Instagram but they just said ah okay because now he doesn't get the flag whenever he puts that guy back in but I remember the first time I saw him he's like ah Ananto Pinkaka like <laughs> no, but then certain things had to check out. Whereas we even then get good so and so is is it correct? Yes, it is. This is the agreement we have with him. It is his music. And this is, you know. So certain things have to check because otherwise everybody will be going around saying Dini talk shit, but when you're really not. So, <laughs> so certain things have to check check out. All right. Before we, we, we take a break because we needed to have some lunch. Mm -hmm. um, how do I maximize on distribution? I'm Doc Sheba. I've now got my link. Mm -hmm. What do I do to actually maximize on making money through Instagram, on making money through YouTube, Vivo, Spotify, Twitter? Because you say everything is monetized now. How do I maximize? So, it how do I make money? Because, you know, I'll give you an example. Uh -huh. I'll look at. Okay, here's a perfect example. Mm -hmm. My friend Shasha. Mm -hmm. Shasha, I saw Shasha growing up, I think since 2010, since I, that's when I've known Shasha, because she used to work with uh, my friend Audius mm -hmm. and uh, Yagi. Mm -hmm. And when she was here in Zim, it, she was under them. Mm -hmm. um, then she then relocated to South Africa, and now she's under Universal through DJ Mapurisa. And right now, I will tell you that the amount of money, granted, Shasha has made hits. Mm -hmm. She's got a couple, three or four from 2019 that everyone knows. Mm -hmm. If you're an ama piano or home person, you know, the, yeah. Granted, she's got big hits compared to a dog Sheba who's trying to make it. Mm -hmm. You've... You've got Shasha here. I've, I go on her Instagram. I think she's got less than 100K followers. Mm -hmm. 100, she's at, I think 137. Oh, she's now surpassed it. Okay, there you go. Um, I'm speaking to her the other day on the phone, and she's about to purchase a whole entire house. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm thinking... From this music. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking... From singing okay. songs, really? <laughs> Shasha went to SA like just the other year, you know, compared to all these artists I see here in Zimbabwe, where um, you can look at Killer T. I think it was just recently where he was uh, happy about just having finished um, 
building his house, but look at how long he's been it's in the game. Yeah. I'm not saying he hasn't done it, yes. but look how long it took him to do it. Mm -hmm. I, w I think maybe Shasha somehow maximized on this distribution. Mm -hmm. How does an artist in Zimbabwe maximize to make money to be able to say, you know what, I'm making I'm money, making money from, from this. I love that you used that, that example. So there's a combination of things Chuktanga that we can never argue is good music. Let's start there. But sometimes, you know, it's, to say good music is relative. So it's what we'll be talking about is, because yeah, hits, you know, if I'm into, I'm a piano, of course I'll like Shasha, but if I'm a rock metal fan, what is a Shasha, you know? So make, making good music to at least compete favorably in your genre, in your lane or whatever it is. And the Susuku Zimbabwe have even challenged um, the creatives we work with to say, actually the quality production matters too. Because now when I did it by Spotify, you're next to Beyonce's record, you're next to Rihanna's record, so you're now being judged at that level. Boz wapinda mstor. No one is going to say, ah, but this, remember, this is from Zim, so that's why, but it's still going to go for the 99 yeah. cents. It's a dope song is a dope song. No one is going to, and also the price tag doesn't change. Like I remember, do you remember, in December, there was that song, Party After Party. <laughs> I don't have an idea where that song is from, but I, I, someone told me it's from Ghana or something. I was like, you know, so you can't run away from good music, right? So once, so it's just now as a distributor, the number one function we have is whether it's dope or not. Our thing is populate it where people are. In terms of it's Spotify, if users are there, if it's, you know, if it's Vivo, because users are there, but also playlist it in those platforms so that you increase the discoverability of that music. So when you have a good distributor, these are the conversations that they'll be giving you. Good, I know, let's plan our release better. Let's make sure, Kuti, we make it to Africa Now playlist. We also make it to new releases, you know, hot, you know, hot weekly releases or whatever served up this week. Let's make sure someone like DJ Edu knows about us. This is now on the marketing side because that then increases our chances of being discovered by new ears in new places. Then the second thing for me is, um, after Tatarisa ta ta quality of what we're creating and what we're selling, is then Tapinda Mu placement, working with the right producer to get you in the right stores. Then the next thing now is where we can't run away from because we're creating a digital, we're selling a digital product, we have to have a digital presence and we have to grow our audience. We have to, it's so super chill, let's also work to growing our audience. Yes, these days we can cheat our way to being in front of more people through sponsored targeted ads and et cetera, but nothing beats uh, an organic reach or nothing beats a genuine engaged loyal fan because it means it wasn't just hit and run miss gender terror and dream because i was with michelle in her car i actually actively listen to you every day or every week like you were saying friday routine you're going to tanga and guy back now if i have twenty five thousand people across the world every month saying well, monthly man. routine yangu no <laughs> tap in that this is how you get to now um being able to buy cars, being able to build houses, being able to finance my child to go to uni, you know, all of these things. Because it's not just that one listen that we're aiming for, it's repeat listens, you know? Like you saying to this guy, he used TikTok, fantastic, but now it's to say, now that people know about him, does he have a catalog of music for me to either refer back to or for new projects to come up, so now I can become a fan of him as a producer of content that I like and resonate with? Or was it just like you're saying, just that one hit wonder, he just happened to, you know, uh, capture a wave, run with it, but then it's repeated by purple. So we're now saying, <clears throat> Dr. but to really maximize it, there's so many things now that you have to be mindful of building and growing. Yes, let's start with that quality record, that good song, but now let's also be actively growing our audience. So you use things like your distributor to also put you in front of different users, but once we capture them, let's retain them. So let's keep that quality content coming every time. 100%. Okay, 100%. So, okay. Guys, distribution is important, clearly. <laughs> you can't shy away from trying to do it by yourself on the internet because you can't do it all. Let those who specialize in it take over. But it gets about it's a Tesla. They are known for that. You all don't want to try all because what you know. But But no, I, I totally understand. I totally understand. So, you know, I think this has been an a very insightful conversation and I think I hope a lot of people take away from this uh, and I hope someone out there who did not know about distribution will think oh I've actually learned quite 
a lot. So, in, you know, I think the most important question before we dash out is maybe for you, because we've heard everything, everything has been centered around making Dolk Sheba big. But no way have we actually spoken with you. what's in it for you. Everything you've mentioned from sending my stuff to radio, sending my stuff to the stores, playlisting me on all these things if I do get accepted, and the works. Is it free? Am I paying for this as a dog shipper? Because <laughs> I need to understand, because maybe that's where I come back to, ah, I mean, in, in exchange of making what? But um, yes, and um, yes, you pay. How you pay is what's beautiful, to be honest. Because this solution, your jungle especially, because Chunko will actually tell you upfront, this is how much you have to pay. It's also quite um to know the only thing that we, we, we charge in advance um, is your Vivo channel setup because of just the way that deal is structured and the mechanics of it. But everything else is on a, is on a split sheet, commissions. Hence why, oh, more than anyone else, we want you to make money. Because I can't be So, yeah. I remember... You know, we earlier started off with uh, Say Colors at the beginning, uh, using him as a reference. This Vivo thing you've, you've, you've started on, mm. what is Vivo based on YouTube? Because I think a lot of artists always have this issue where they say, um, Vivo, chini chino neza, achifuriki, achodamwemono. And that's where you end up having these issues where recently you've got... Um, Aishan, who has lost his content. You've got, I heard recently, the, the new uh, guys who've been doing Comedy Central, the guys yes. who were doing what we're doing about, yeah. they were hacked and content. their content was deleted. And I think it all maybe is centered between maybe someone who's always controlling your stuff and maybe Muneta my issues in kind of like how you had, a, um, you know, not all the same altercation, but you had a query with say colors, you could have been spiteful and just deleted the whole entire catalog and said, you know what, do you, you're just going to delete. Why can't an artist like me, Doc Sheba, just use the internet and open my own Vivo account? Why is it somehow a lot of people come in, might not be you, Jacaranda, but it's always these other people who have, uh, are also who come and say, no, we open Vivo accounts. What's so special about this Vivo account? The, it's like um, you, you can't put your own music on iTunes. Um, people think they can put their own music on iTunes because they're working maybe with TuneCore, but that's exactly the same thing. Yaguti, these stores have their set rules. We only work with an aggregator or a record label. And when they qualify what record label they mean, because everybody will say, well, you know, I'm hot property records in Zimbabwe. They'll say, no, 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 fantastic. But what we mean is you have to be, your catalog size has to be at this minimum level and above. Those are the type of accounts. They do B2B. They don't do B2C. Now, we, we look at um, their model. So because they have a way of processing the files that they want, they have a way of delivering those files that they want, you know, so they, they prefer, they set the term. So this is why if you want to be on a platform for visual products that's monetized, Vivo is your go-to. Fantastically for us now, thank you, uh, thankfully for us rather, it's just syndicated with YouTube. So that, I think there's no confusion because Uruki you want to by YouTube, so you then think, it's the same as any other YouTube account, but it isn't. It's just that Vivo it's, itself, Vivo.com is a whole platform on its own, like iTunes or Spotify, but they also just have a deal with YouTube to say, we, you, can, you can embed in your, system, in your coded system to show videos on your platform, but they belong to Vivo. So that's just that technicality. I'm going to know, Evo, these stores have their minimum 
type of client that they want to service. Everyone else, you come through these people, these are our approved agents, so to speak. So I can't go on vida.com and make up a Vivo account? Um, For a fee, I don't know. Can't I do it myself? No, you can. I'm sure there's a, not on the, so there's different uh, Vivo agents. So you can go to, v, uh, I think it's v, Vidya, I think v, uh, the, uh, the other online guys. I'm sure Dito at this point can also facilitate, Chunko even, I think they facilitate Vivo accounts as well. So it's just the distributor has more stores that they can put you on. So like I said, Bukhtanga comes down to, after you've checked all the other questions, do I really want the headache, da, 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 which distributor do I want to use? So yes, you can do it, but through that agent, that Vivo agent, because I need deal near Vivo to be able to process those account setups. At any given time, can I access my Vivo account? So it, in the sense where I can log into my accounts, let's say my Gmail or my YouTube from my device mm -hmm. or from whatever place I am, as long as I've got the details. No, Will unfortunately, can I do that. Here? No. So again, just like iTunes, uh, you know, iTunes and Spotify have started this thing, Spotify for artists or Apple Connect, to give you insight in how your music is performing, but you can't upload new content through those channels because, again, those stores prefer to deliver in this way using these, um, if you want, uh, agreed partners. So essentially, Vivo is like a store. It's a store. It's like, no, no, it's like so when people are consuming a view in Vivo, it must monetize it a bit more than that. YouTube. Yes. Okay. So this is why we, like even when we were talking earlier, once you sign with a major label, automatically your stuff is on Vivo. Universal, yeah. Sony. Yeah. Funny story yeah. is like that, that they don't Jeez. even, they're not trying to say, no, you can have, no, no, no. They can merge your channels, fantastic, but Vivo, they are, because it makes more money, the view, because it is a store, just syndicates through YouTube. Um, or if you're with, the Warner, with Warner Brothers, they have their own direct deal with YouTube as well, where they're like bypassing the whole Vivo arrangement to say, no, as long as you see WB, we have a direct relationship with YouTube for our content. So it's already monetized, but at a higher rate because they could negotiate it. Vivo is actually an amalgamation of the three major labels and a, comp a media company from Abu Dhabi. So you know, G, um, Universal, Sony, and not the big three, Universal, Sony, and then of course there's w Warner Brothers and a company from Abu Dhabi own Vivo. So that's why off the bat, and they negotiated a better, higher paying royalty fee. That's why they say no. If you are serious about making this money because you make music, we are pa vivo. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. No. Um, I think I'm gonna go back home and uh, tap into my dog share but alter ego mm -hmm. and create a, an EP. An EP, strawberry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then I'll come back. Uh -huh. And I will test the distribution model, guys. I will test out the distribution model. But I must say, though, what I would love to stress, think, you know, through this uh, platform that you've given us, is let's also, as the creative community, do the due diligence and research and understand this. Because distributions are not magicians. We're not just going to figure out money from, say, terrible music or for, from, say, a brand that's not, like we were talking, I love that word when you said maximize, and that's a fantastic, how do I maximize? I have great music, I have, for now, 20,000 20, people through my WhatsApp or my Facebook, or et cetera. Draw from Basse going forward. The more we now know, it informs the, the way we, I think, um, execute on these, you know, through this, or rather we utilize this opportunity because, it's, it's one thing to think just because the upper internet next, time, next month I'm getting a $10,000 check from Jungle. No, it doesn't work like that. We have to understand the science of how we get to that $10,000 check and really do what's required. Not product, what do you want to do? I don't want to do anything about iTunes. But that's just a thing. It's a house that's a business. It's a business. It's a business. Because like I paid them, because I'm not checking. I'm going to pin them. Okay. That is the way we're better at. But look, it's a please. No, a hundred percent. But definitely, guys, get into the distribution. Get into this because a lot of people are making money from this. You will notice that you might find an artist in Zimbabwe who's got 300k plus followers, does not make 
not as much money as someone in Nigeria who might have actually 20,000 followers because somehow he's maximized on his distribution. And I love that you, when you talked about Shasha, because those numbers that she's making and generating when you used to be when you are at Beyonce's status. Mm -hmm. So today, digital has shown, Kuti, the numbers actually don't matter. What matters in terms of audience numbers, what actually matters is who is playing and where they are located, mm -hmm. genuinely, and where they are playing, playing you from. So if you are having more fans who are on your Spotify, on your Apple Music, versus by SoundCloud, well, we know. What are we now? And in the right markets where the royalty rate is higher, what are we now with your list and you know, fewer numbers? And this is the case even with our catalog. Um, some of our best performing brands, like there's a guy we work with called Ajibata in, the, in, in, in Nigeria. He has 35,000 followers on Instagram, but his royalties every month are way more than accounts that we have here in Zimbabwe with 200,000 followers. And it's something that we really try to bring to our, our creative uh, brand's attention. It's not just about the numbers. It's really looking at where the analytics, who is consuming me, and realizing it's better for you to inform Munaruko about your brand and about what you're creating. So it's, 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 it's yeah, distribution is beautiful, but Yeah, but this is the start, getting people to be aware. So I think we're happy for Zit to have come here. Thank you. Sarah. Sat down with Tanya, uh, Jungle slash Kosha. Marketing side. <laughs> <laughs> and she was quick to put her little things here, as you can see, Kosha. But, uh, but they were already here, Michelle. <laughs> uh, listen, <laughs> listen, guys. When I got here, <laughs> but nonetheless, we appreciate. <laughs> we appreciate. We appreciate. Um, uh, it's been a great chat. I think as soon as I'm done with you, I need to talk to you about distributing Zipped. Yeah. So while we are on this distri thing. Um, so guys, thank you for listening. If you're listening from your car, driving to work, or driving from somewhere, I don't know, please subscribe to Zip Podcast on Instagram, on Facebook. And if you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe. And we've got a new song from a new sensation, um, don't tell them anything. You heard it here first. <laughs> PD the Pharaoh featuring Delroy Rotate. Whoa, I love Let's get this. It. Thank you again, Michelle. Enjoyed this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. PD the Pharaoh, yeah. She give me love and rotate. She give me love and rotate. Yeah, she give me love and rotate. Love no one can forget. She said she want me a friend Say we friend to the end But she frontin' on me But I can't take all this frontin' shawty If you're gonna give me your love, mama I don't want undercover I don't want undercover Give me your love, mama I don't want undercover I don't want undercover Saka tip it, tip it, tip it Do this for money. Why it for me? Shake your bum, me. Girl, you look pretty good, mommy. What's your name is? Let me take you on a damn tour. This, this is show, mommy. Ooh, this is show, babe. But you're still fronting on a nigga. So you know the shamari. If you're gonna give me your love, mama. I don't want undercover.
This is where we get things done. So don't friends on a nigga, baby. If you're gone.